sweating and you like it's cool Why they like it's cool when you pull up with a new And it's not all that I know back to my channel my name is Benaya and today we are doing a story time on why I love a fast food restaurant slash like the drama behind it um of my last day there so if you want to hear that story time don't forget to like comment subscribe follow my socials um I just posted a picture today it, was, it snowed so you see that picture? Give it a like and comment. An ice emoji. And now, not further ado, let's get into this story time. Okay, so this story time takes place on when I first got put on to a job that was kind of, um, it was in a hospital, let's just be honest. So it was in a hospital, but it was in a, it was a fast food restaurant. So basically, when I got put on, it was like two, two to three managers. The third manager was temporary um, from my concern or whatever the case may be. But the second manager was like, it was basically a morning and night manager. The manager that knew like majority of the stuff, he was, um, we're gonna call him Ginger Ale. So Ginger Ale, he was like the coolest manager ever. Like he hired me, put me on and like, he was just like somebody I could talk to like as a friend, like in an interview, I felt so relaxed talking to him, whatever the case may be. So long story short with Ginger Ale, he ended up leaving. And in replacement, it was a, another manager that got put on. We're gonna give her, we're gonna give her, we're just gonna call her Stella. So Stella came on and she already knew one of the managers cause they was cool from a different store. And she came on and basically she had got under the feathers of another co-worker and he did not like her. He said he used to tell us how she used to rush them and call them slow. And she was just very like her demeanor there when she first got put on was just very like, she knew what she was doing. She was very like bossy and she didn't like the things that we did. She felt like we were too playful, like we joked too much okay okay so that's a little background on her and she was like very bipolar she wanted us to have like a stricter environment she felt like everybody just played entirely too much as her time went on she started making like a lot of rules to enforce the night crew because that's what i was mostly on the night crew what we could and what we couldn't do we couldn't listen to music we used to be able to listen to music we couldn't use some music we couldn't do um we couldn't play on our phones like and mind you we're closed like what couldn't be on our phone we couldn't do nothing like she was like very like strict she didn't really rub me the wrong way until like she started like questioning me and my work bestie like our ability on how to work now mind you like i don't have no problem being like criticized like strictly like you know like constructive criticism is that what i'm trying to say yeah i'm not like i don't care about that like if you're gonna give me constructive criticism make sure that it's like accurate and I'm not already doing it. So one day it got to the point where we created this relationship where she was like very bipolar, had her mom's on, she was like really, really sweet and was like concerned about, yeah, honey, you can go get you something to eat. Cause I'll be like, can I have this? Like, cause our other manager, Ginger L, before he left, he's like, y'all, y'all get what y'all want to get or y'all want to go if you didn't want anything you didn't have to get anything now guys i know we're not obligated to have any food like i was impressed about that but like she made it a big big deal and like i got more story times on what she did but she used to make lists like run up there and throw trash and harry would throw it in the trash and everything and the next couple clips y'all gonna see like different scenarios that happened throughout the year that i was working there that she was doing that was pissing me off and i want to add i was getting wrote up for stupid stuff and not just by her somebody else made me sign a whole email that's a whole nother different story time that i forgot to add in here i should have but yeah just keep watching one night we had basically got a secret shopper and the secret shopper was like um saying that me and another girl were talking and we did not greet the customer we didn't do anything with the customer and we still carried our conversation even while trying to help the customer out 
now like okay cool but that, i know that's not me i know that i just knew who it was and i knew it wasn't me but she tried to blame it entirely on me right and i was just like no i know who it was but sis it wasn't me but i was just like okay whatever i'll take i'll take your little constructive criticism whatever the case may be but then it got closer and closer to like problems like dealing with customers like because these customers just come in here and cause nothing but drama now the customers is a whole nother different story because honestly they were just ugh. they were just ugh. so another problem that got me fed up was when me and my work bestie we were working together and it used to just be me and him closing all the time and she used to complain like oh why are y'all moving so slow um y'all need to hurry up and hurry up and clean and wrap it up and da 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 and me and my work bestie used to be like what are you talking about like we're moving as fast as we can and why are you trying to rush us out aren't we guaranteed like on hours our hours and that's another thing that made me like uh, put my two weeks in as well the hours because they were very picky and they used to try to like rush up uh, rush us up out of there the third thing that pissed me entirely off was when they started making these complaints in the morning talking about some oh whoever washed the dishes last night did not wash them well um they're dirty uh they they used to write like little lists on people duties and stuff the list thing became a huge issue but that's another story time, to be honest with y'all, because it's it was so much and they constantly changed it. But it also became a morning shift versus closing shift um, problem because morning shift wasn't doing what they supposed to be doing. And it left second shift to do everything slash closing shift. And it just became a huge problem. And the second shift manager used to like treat us like children when it came to that list. And morning shift just, you know, they would just get a slap on the wrist and keep it pushing. If they did it, they did it. If they didn't, they didn't. But it was always left on second shift. The door that was facing that way, it had a list of everybody's name and it had the duties that they were doing. Night shift people, they always change the duties because I don't know why. Morning shift, same people do the same shit. Cool, whatever. That's morning shift. I'm not tripping. As long as they do what they're supposed to do. But they didn't. So it would leave us struggling to not only um, restock and still um, serve customers on top of that wash dishes in between that we're like putting up. Um, like we had a lemonade thing that we had to clean. Lemonade is sticky, nasty, and it had like seeds in it. That junk itself took at least like an hour to do, depending on not even less than an hour to do. But it still was like, if you want to clean it effectively, and then we used to have like a list where it would tell us what needs to be deep cleaning. The lemonade machine was one of those things on the list. So when we started getting these complaints and they was just saying, oh, nice shit, I ain't doing a job. We like, who y'all talking to? Because it's only me and my work bestie at this moment. And then whoever's in the back kitchen, but they was having problems up front mostly. So we just like no it's not like we because we we knew we were good workers and we knew we cleaned it well we was like what the heck like y'all lying long story short it got to the point where i realized that i wasn't happy anymore i was not happy being there and the manager was making it very difficult for me she just tried to always make it seem like i was doing something wrong she used to like come up to me and be like uh you need to do this you need to talk to these customers like this you need to do that da, 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 da. like she always just ordered you around to do stuff let's get to my last day that's just those reasons were an add up of why i just like was unhappy and i was i was like okay time to leave long so short i saw an opening for a job that i wanted to do i put in my application i knew somebody on the job that could easily get me in there because they've been there for a very very long time and he gave me the number. I got an interview. Interview as soon as I put an application, I called, got an interview in like two days, had the interview, and then they continued the process with me within a week. After that, I got a call and I accepted the offer. And then there was like, okay, your start date is this and that. So as soon as they said my start date was this and that, I went to work the next day and I put in my two week. So after that came the manager, she was just kind of like, well, Stella was kind of just like, oh, 
So y'all, the crazy part is I didn't tell anybody. So I had the first shift manager had pulled me into the room with her and said she so-called got pulled in a meeting. And it was like, we want to know more about me, myself, whatever. And she so-called said she put in a good word, but she did it. She just, ugh, she was shady too. So then Short Stella, of course, found out and was like, oh, are you going to be happy there? I'm going to miss you. Like she was doing that sad people junk because she didn't expect me to put in my two weeks like that, but I did. And like I said, she bipolar. So the next couple of clips is her reaction of me finally leaving in my last day. She wasn't even like... She was kind of being nice a little bit a couple weeks, but then on my last day is when we got into it. Like, we never got into it. So, this is what happened. <laughs> so, basically, my last day came, and I was cousin with all my favorite people in the back and in the front. And it was just, like, bittersweet because not only were we slow as crap, but it was just kind of like my last day. So I really wasn't even trying to do too much. I was chilling, kicking it like, oh my, that's my last day. I'm gonna have fun with my people that I like. We were slow, like I said, and I was, I was on my phone. She had called me on my phone and she was like, uh, you need to get off your phone. I'm like, oh, okay, my bad, whatever. But then she had called me on my phone again and we was like, at this point, it was slow. Like, it was like customers coming in, like one or two customers coming in every two to three hours. So it was, at this time, it was like five, six o'clock. And I had already been there for like, I want to say only just a couple hours. Because at this point, hours were getting cut. And I was probably working literally like no more than six to seven hours. So she called me on my phone again. And then I was like talking to like the back of the house and just really kicking it because there we we stopped everything we was caught up on everything there was nothing to do nothing so she had came out there again and she was like i see you on your phone through the camera you're talking and she said you can go home just like that and i was like i'm not going anywhere like no basically that's when it got kind of like what the heck so I just told her, I was like, I'm not going anywhere. I said, this is my last day. I can complete my little hours. We only got like, it was literally only like two hours left or whatever the case may be. And I was like, I'm not going anywhere. Like y'all already cutting hours enough. I need my full eight hours or my full whatever time I was starting and what I ended. I said, I'm not going nowhere. And so she got kind of mad at me. She was just like, yes, you are. I was like, no, I'm not. And I stayed right there and I act like I was doing something. I ignored her completely. So then boom. It got closer and closer for time to come out, and then she was just like, "Okay, you could stay um, to your time, but as soon as it, as soon as we close, you gonna go home." And I was just like, "Yeah, okay," because I knew I wasn't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I said this man name. That's what my work bestie was like. Yeah, I don't know why she tried to send you home, and I'm gonna be the only one up here. And I was like, "Yeah, exactly. Like I'm not about to leave you by yourself and make you clean up everything and." all them dishes like just because we slowed on me we don't have all them dishes to wash like what is she even talking about so we both was just like kind of like standing our ground and he and every time she'll come out try to be like you need to go home he was like why like we i need help she said like, i can help you he was like no you can't like don't you got other stuff to do because you had to count our drawers and do all that stuff so she's like i could do it we was like no like i'm willing to stay i'm going to stay and that was that boom so it's time to close <laughs> And I'm trying to ignore her completely. I'm helping him and I'm trying to like, you know, just stay to like at least help him clean. But I knew at this point, I, she had got entirely pissed off. So time closed, she's like, I need to talk to you cause you need to go home, I'm like whatever. So at this point she was like, she pulled me into the office and she was like, you're leaving right now. And I was like, okay, whatever. At this point I just, at this point, I just agreed. And I was like, okay, whatever. But then she tried to take my badge away. And I was like, what are you doing? No, I'm not giving you my badge. And she was like, yes, you are. Um, it was a girl that was there. Um, she ain't important to the source. I don't really need to give her a name. But she basically got fired. And they, <laughs> she basically got fired. And they took her badge. My story was different. 
I'm transferring to a different department. I don't need to give you my badge because I'm still gonna be under technically the hospital. Your, your little department ain't got nothing to do with me. It's whatever. So I was like, no, I'm not giving you my badge. And so we sitting here going back and forth, like literally back and forth. And she was like, why are you acting like this? I never seen you act like this. I'm like, well, y'all seeing the real side of me now. Like, I'm because at this point, I was just like really upset because I'm just like, she really trying to, like, she already trying to get me to go home early. I had to force myself to stay until we close. And even then, I, I was still supposed to stay like an hour behind to clean up. And she would not let me. Then turn around and try to take my badge. I was like, ugh. So she got on the phone with our uh, other manager, the one that really, that she knew. And she was like, talk to her. Talk to her and try to handle for me. I said, I'm not talking to nobody. And I and I did the hand. I, like, I was like, get that phone out of my face. I'm not talking to nobody. I'm not giving my badge in the story. And then I was telling them to put like, it's an HR manager, but she ain't really. She HR manager over like two, three different departments. She don't really be giving a crap what this manager got to say. They already had got into it one time. So she didn't really care for her. So she called the other HR manager like, it's ringing. Then I answer the phone. Mind you, it's almost nine o'clock at night, and the other manager worked early in the morning. She's not gonna answer the phone for you. Why are you calling her for? She's not gonna answer the phone for you. So it was kind of like a smirk in her face. So I wasn't gonna talk to her anyway. Like, girl, whatever. She tried to dismiss me, but I dismissed myself because I slammed the door on her face. But I came back and was like, bye, y'all. I was like, I'm gone. I'll talk to y'all later. Boom, whatever. And that was that. After that, I had work Monday and I tried to stay away from that little area for a while, but then I shortly realized I ain't nothing to eat in the hospital except for the calf. And it was a subway in there in the place I worked at. So I was just like, oh, like there's nothing to eat. So I stayed away from there for a long, long time. But mind you, I left my work bestie there. So I was like, dang, I felt so bad for him because it was just going to it was going downhill so i was like let me go in there so i went in there and i used to just talk to him and she would see me she wouldn't speak i was like dang sis i'm under your skin like that like i made you mad like that i didn't mean to but i don't care at the end of the day let me tell y'all guys this like if y'all work for a place and at the end of the day, if you're not happy, leave. That's really it. Um, it's just funny because I'm, I'm at this moment, I um, am leaving the hospital all together. I got me a new job. And it's going to be a different experience for me. I'm ready for to do this because at the end of the day, like, one thing about it, two things for show. If I don't like a job, I'm out the door. <laughs> That's the end of the story time. I hope you guys like it and I hope it wasn't all over the place. I try to get at least like um the reasons why I it, stuff was like adding up and was getting on my nerves for me to start looking in the little background why how I got the job I'm in. Plus me out the door now. <laughs> That's all I had to say, I guess. Um don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate everybody that's subscribing. See you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.